So what I have here is this integral. Evaluating this line integral here by travelling along this closed curve, this closed piecewise curve composed of the following three parts. The line y equals x going from the origin till it hits the circle portion of the circle, x squared plus y squared is 9, following that anti-clockwise till it hits the y-axis and then travelling down the y-axis back to the origin. And what that represents, of course, is the scalar product of, for any point on it, the position vector of the point with the vector field that you're travelling through here, where that vector field has these two components. It's got x squared e to the x as its x component and x squared plus y squared as its y component. Then the first thing to notice is this, the x component of this vector field is independent of y, which means as you gather up the scalar product, interpret it as you will, or I've done or whatever, as you gather that up travelling along the portion of y equals to x, whatever you've picked up in terms of the x components, you will then lose as you travel along the circle because you're just retracing your steps through the x's. Because for each of these points, it's only the, as far as that component is concerned, it's only the x's that matter. If that had a y portion in it, then the values would have been different in the different parts. But as there's no y component, the values of the x component traveling along this part are exactly the same but in reverse them travelling in that part. So that means when I come to work out this, I can ignore this part of it. It gets ignored the first bit anyway, I'll just do the first bit as normal. So call that, if we try, take that one first, then do the line, and then do the arc. So if I was working out I1, ignoring what it actually says there, I would, I would say this, right, going down a vertical line, I would have x is 0 for the y-axis, dx is also 0, and y would be between 0 and 3, going from 3 down to 0, because that's a circle of radius 3, so that part there is 3. So if I was just writing that out without investigating exactly what the consequences of those things were, I would just write the integral down this way. i say so I've got the integral of, then I would just start putting these things, well x is 0, the whole thing goes. x is 0, that goes. I'm just left with y squared dy. y squared dy. I don't require a parameter because I'm only left with one variable. And y went from 3, because it was travelling downwards, to 0. So that means i1 is simply going to be a one third, and I'll just keep it inside, one third of y cubed from 3 to 0. So that would be evaluate at 0, evaluate at 3, 3 cubed, but knock out of 3, so 3 squared, 9. So i1 is going to be negative 9. Right. So dropping down the way, I've picked up negative 9. I've got negative 9 in the basket. Next bit, what about i2? Oops, I have to step that down a bit. Well, what happens with i2? Well, I've got x's and y's. So what I'll do is I'll create a parameter. You can just use x as a parameter, or not. I'll create a parameter t, where I'll say let x be t, which means that y would also be t, since y equals x, which also means that dx will be dt, and dy will be also dt. And since t is just mirroring x, that means whatever x does, and x is going from 0 till it hits this part here, well that radius is 3, and that's a 45 degree triangle, so the ratio is 1, 1 root 2, so this must be 3 divided by root 2. So I've got 3 over root 2 there, so t is going to go between 0 and 3 upon root 2. Right, ready to go with that then. So, what's the value of the integral travelling along that part? But I'm not going to work out this part of it, because I know that will just be taken away from me later on. So I'll just work out the y part of it. So the y part of it is going to be, well, I've got x squared plus y squared. Well, x is t, so that's t squared plus t squared, so that's going to be 2t squared. I'm going to put that out, dt, going from 0 to 3 upon root 2. Well, that's ready to go straight away. So I've got 2 thirds of it then. So I've got 2 thirds of t cubed from 0 to 3 upon root 2. So I've got 2 thirds of, well, cubing that's going to be ne ooh, going to be 27 over root 2, root 2, root 2, root 2, root 2, root 2 minus 0. And then these bits will cancel, the 2's cancel, that goes 9, so it's 9 upon root 2. 
So I2 is going to be 9 upon root 2. Not strictly speaking, I should put down this part, just the y part of it. 9 upon root 2. I know there's an extra part there, but I3 will just take it away. I'll just put a wee note, plus some extra part. Now, I3. Travelling along the arc of that portion of a circle, not like that eighth circle. What we do with I3? Well, the first thing I'll do with that is create a parameter. Well, it's at a fixed distance, so R's not a variable. So the angle will define any point as it travels along the curve. So we'll just do that. So polar coordinates. So it's just a case of let like x equal, but it's fixed at 3 though. So it's 3 cos theta. So y is going to be 3 sine theta. So dx is going to be negative 3 sine theta d theta and dy if I need it, which I do, is going to be 3 cos theta d theta and finally what's theta going to be? Well, it's a 45 degree triangle so it's going from 45 degrees pi upon 4 up to 90 degrees up to pi upon 2 so it's just a case of feed that lot in to get I3 Right, I've not left myself a lot of room here, that wasn't very clever. So I3 is going to be, is there enough room for this? Probably not, so I'll have to sacrifice that. Pi upon 4 to pi upon 2 of x squared plus y squared. Well, x squared plus y squared is just 9. You could feed them in individually if you liked. 3 squared cos squared plus 3 squared sine squared. That takes the 9 out as a factor. Cos squared plus sine squared is just 1, so it just leaves you 9. But you knew it anyway, 9. But dy is 3 cos theta d theta times 3 cos theta d theta. There, just made it. So the 27 can come out. All I've got to do is integrate cos. Well, it just pops back to sine. Evaluated at pi upon 4 and pi upon 2. But again, I've only worked out the y part of it. I should put a wee note of that. I know there's an extra bit, but it's going to, get knock, it's going to knock out that part. So that means I've got 27 times Sine of pi upon 2, 1. Sine of pi upon 4, 1 upon root 2. I could put minus e there if you like, just to show it cancels out that part. So that would be i3, or rather just the y part of it. So straight speaking, I surely put that, just put a bracket there. Which means that, <coughs> final answer will be add the three bits together. What have I gathered up now, travelling along 1, 2 and 3? Well, i1 gave me a negative 9. I2 gave me a 9 upon root 2, plus an extra wee bit. I3 gave me a 27 minus 27 upon root 2, but it took away that wee bit, so I didn't actually need to mention it. So adding up the integral part of that, I've got 18, and these fractional parts, I've got negative 18, so minus 18 upon root 2. Tidy it up as you will, I could rationalise the denominator, but I'm just going to take out the 18 and make it 18 minus a uh, times 1 minus 1 upon root 2 for the answer to that part. Right, I'm going to check that with Green's theorem. So, checking it with Green's theorem, which says this <coughs> if you travel through, <coughs> if you follow a closed path through a vector field, picking up the scalar product of <coughs> the position vector times the, this, the, the vector, then that's equivalent to, well I'll just split that up, calling the two components of the vector field some function of xy plus some function of xy again for the xy component, picking up this, then evaluating that throughout the curve is equivalent to working out this expression, partial q by x minus partial p by y throughout the area. So we'll just use that here then. So using Green's theorem it would be this then. Instead of evaluating the line integral around the closed curve, I'll work out the integral over the area of, I might as well spell it out, so it would be partial of this thing, so partial x squared plus y squared by partial x minus partial of that thing, x squared e to the x by partial y dx dy so that's going to be the integral of well by x that's just going to give you 2x 
and that's going to give you nothing at all. So I've only got 2x dx dy throughout that area. Well, what is that area? That sector there. Well, it's circular, full of coordinates. So I may as well just jump straight into pull the coordinates. So what have I got? I've got x is r cos theta, y is r sin theta, and dx dy is equal to r dr d theta. Limits, well, as you trace out the ray to sweep out the points towards the periphery there, r is going to go from 0 to 3. And then as you gather up the rays to sweep out the whole area, theta is going to go from pi upon 4 to pi upon 2. Right, so you just feed that lot in there then. So what have I got? So I've got from pi upon 4 to pi upon 2, and then gathering the rays from 0 to 3 of 2, I'll just pop that out to the front, x, which is r cos theta, and dx dy, the area element, r dr d theta. Now, they're both simple integrations. It's r and theta simple. Neither of them is going to provide an expression that the other one wants. So as far as they're concerned, they're completely independent constants. So I'll just split it then. So I've got 2 times integral from pi upon 4 to pi upon 2 of cos theta d theta times integral from 0 to 3 of r squared dr. So it's 2 times and then just go through the evaluation. So cos will pop back to sine, pi upon 4 to pi upon 2. R, that will go back to, or well, up to, one third of R cubed from 0 to 3. So I've got 2 times, well, sine of pi upon 2 is 1, so of pi upon 4, I said that, is 1 upon root 2, I'll just send all garbled, and that's going to be one third of just 27 minus 0. I'll put it minus 0. So altogether for the integral, I've got 9 times 2 is 18 times 1 minus 1 upon root 2. There it is. Which of course is exactly the same as what you had when you evaluated the line integral, ignoring the x components. Because since it was a closed curve, you went forward and backward through the same distances in x. It would be different if it was just evaluating it as far as that point and only come back a certain distance. Then I would have to work it out. But since it was a closed curve and I went as far forward as I was coming back, I knew I could just ignore it. Last thing would be just to check that those two missing components were actually the same, which obviously they were because these results are the same, and just to complete the, the integration of that little integration of my parts. So I'll clear that. So finally, and completely unnecessarily, it's just a demonstration of it, what were the two missing parts? What was that missing part? of the integral moving along i2 through that vector field was missing x components. Well, what would that be? Well, just using the same parameters you had before, which was x equals t. So dx equals dt. And since t was mirroring x, t is going to go from 0 to 3 upon root 2. So we'd have this. It'd be the integral from 0 to 3 upon root 2 of this thing. x was t, so that's e to the t, and dx was dt. Just evaluating that. <coughs> of course, it would be exactly the same as just saying <coughs> x because there's only the one variable, but just sticking with the parameter in case it was some other line and those differences. So, what's that going to be? Well, integration by parts, twice, whittle down t. So, it'll be the integrating e then. So, Leave t squared alone, integrate e to the t, nice and easy, stays the way it was. Subtract, now differentiate that, 2t, copy that over, e to the t, uh, dt, evaluated from 0 to 3 upon root 2. Right, t squared e to the t minus 2 times, now integrate it again. Same thing, integrating the e to the t. So that just stays the way it is, that gets integrated, doesn't change, very nice. And then that whittles, differentiate that, goes down to 1, that's still e to the t dt from 0 to 3 upon root 2. So what have I got altogether then? I've got t squared e to the t minus 2t e to the t plus 2 e to the t 
to be evaluated. There's the final expression. Yeah, that's all nice and tidy. I'll just take out that e to the t. And that leaves me a t squared minus 2t plus 2 to be evaluated from 3. Which is more work than you have to do in any of the other integrations. Just to see it all get taken away. It's wiped out by that arc there. Possibly. I've shown that. So, what's this? So that's going to be e to the 3 upon root 2. And that's the t squared, 9 upon 2. 2 times it, I'll let the two, root 2 knock out part of that 2, leaving you root 2, so I'll be 3 root 2, plus just 2. Minus at 0, that'll just be e to the 0, times, and that'll just be 2. So altogether I've got, well, I'll put that little coefficient to the front. Well, in halves that'd be 4, 4 and 9 is 13. 30 upon, 13 upon 2 minus 3 root 2, e to the 3 upon root 2, quite nasty, yeah? and that's just 1, so minus 2. So that's what I ignored in the first one. That should have been the additional part that hopefully wasn't necessary, because hopefully this portion will just knock it out. Again, it's just a demonstration of that. Right, so what about I3? What about the x part of I3? Well, I3, polar coordinates. Put it down again. So what was that? But again, it was along the arc, so it's fixed. So, mm, so x was 3 cos theta. I know I don't need y. Put it down anyway. 3 sine theta. So dx is going to be negative 3 sine theta d theta. I know I don't need it. So dy is going to be 3 cos theta d theta. Theta is my parameter now, so that's going to follow the curve from pi up and 4 to pi up in 2. So that's all I need to put in here. And I haven't done that, I've probably left so have enough room now. So, the x portion of that integral travelling along that arc would be from pi up in 4 to pi up in 2 of x squared, so I'll be 3 squared cos squared, so 9 cos squared theta, e to the 3 cos theta, dx, which is negative 3 sine theta d theta. Next part would be this thing. That's a nasty bunch of stuff. Use a substitution. That's the obvious part there. Let u or something equal 3 cos theta. Well, I'm going to let t equal it. A simple contrivance just to make it look even more like this. So I'm going to let t equal 3 cos theta. So dt will be negative 3 sine theta d theta. And then when theta equals pi upon 4, that means that t will equal 3 times cos pi upon 4. That's 1 upon root 2, so that's 3 upon root 2. And when theta equals 0, that means t will equal 3 cos 0, which is just 0. So my integral is going to be this then. It's going to be from root 3 upon root 2 to 0. 9 cos squared. Well, that's just going to be t squared. e to the 3 cos, that's just going to be e to the t. I've still got this negative 3 sine theta just now. I don't want to be able to do that change about with the square root of 1 minus the t squared and so on. But I know I don't need it, because the d theta will just be dt divided by negative 3 sine theta. So all I've got in the end is just from 0... No, it's not. From 3 upon root 2 to 0 of t squared e to the t dt. Boom. There you go. If the limits are the other way around, the only effect that has is in turning the integral to its negative because when it comes to the evaluation brackets, that just means they'll be the opposite way around to the way they were there. And when you switch the subtraction, it becomes negative. So that's the same as the negative of 0 to 3 upon root 2 of t squared e to the t dt, which I don't need to work out because that's just precisely this one, so it's the negative of i2. So these two parts would have been the same with opposite signs and knocked each other out just as you would have expected. Right, that's it all done.